Okay, I'm working on my second burner. And uh, there's the shell for it. The plenum. And it's almost 200 um, holes that are going to go into the uh, burner. Um, so what I'm using this time, I used lithium grease on the last one. This time I'm using a and because I had some. I sent 17. So this is probably 15 years old or more. Um, and I'm using that as the release. And I just want to show how I put it on and uh, get it in there. So this is a um, brazing rod that I cut. It's 332nd inch material. I just dropped one. There it is. And I've already treated or coated the inside of my mold with it. So it's pretty slimy. Um, so I want to show how I do these. I want these nicely coated. I tried one with uh, aluminum which I would use again, I guess, but um, they all stuck and it's because I didn't have them properly coated. So you take a nice big blob or two. And uh, why I wear gloves. This stuff, it's diaper rash ointment, it's like it sticks to you and it will not come off. It's a mix of um, um, Vaseline petrolatum, um, lanolin, wax, paraffin, and uh, other things. But it's nice and sticky and nasty and it coats these really nicely that way. And then I grab a mess and I just start sticking them in. The whole process of putting these in takes about a half hour, 45 minutes. And in a moment I will magically speed this whole process up so it takes less time for you than me. Okay, here we go. And voila, we're done. Next, we'll put in the uh, refractory, put on the head, and uh, I'll show that in just a sec. Okay, now we're going to put the refractory in here, and then we'll put the, uh, the plenum on. Um, I'm using Mizzo refractory. And it's down under the table here. So, add a little bit of water, not too much. What I want to do is dampen all the refractory with not enough water first, so that it'll soak up more water that I put in fairly easily. I'm not using the necessarily the quote unquote right amount. But, uh, and now it just takes a little teeny bit and it will suddenly change form like that middle stuff has. Kind of amazing. Now, I'm gonna make it a little wetter than we would know. That was too much water. I bet you anything. <laughs> Actually, not too bad.
Okay, so it's, you can see the consistency. That would be too wet for real, like like if I was going, see how water is starting to, if I just shake it, the water comes to the surface. That's too wet for, uh, if you're really casting a real factory. But for this, because I want it to sink in and the, it, it'll be a little weaker than it would be. But um, basically, put it on top. Whack it down. In the last few coats or layers, I'll put less water in. And you see how it's kind of mounted in the middle, so I'm going to just put it on the sides here. Okay, mix some more. Probably uh, eight ounce cups. Hang on, I'll check. Good, it says 200 cups. Doesn't say how many ounces, oh well. They're, they're that big, okay? Um, and then I'll do the same thing. I was doing a forge body or something. This would probably be pretty good. Yeah. When I bounce it, you can see the water coming out, so. And even now, you can see water pulling up through it. Speed it up a little bit here. The advantage of using metal rods for this. So you see how the water is pulled up here. Um, it's not dripping off, well, almost a little bit here, but um, get that pretty even. Okay, it's looking pretty good to me. What I'm gonna do. Loosen it up around the edges. That's where the plenum has to push in. There we go. I already put these test fit this whole thing and put these holes in the right place. So I already have holes that I'm running in. Okay, now inside, and we can see this side is up a little bit. Put one here too. Basically, I want to do the same thing you saw me doing before. Because 
I want it to form a really nice seal around the inside. I've got a little lip on the inside of this uh, of the plenum that I welded in there so that the refractory has to come up around that and grab it. So it'll hold it tight. You can hit it, you can vibrate it, and just whacking it, as you saw, as you saw when I was doing it without a, a plenum in there, worked quite well. So I think we're good. Um, I'll put a ba bag over it, and we'll come back in two days and pull it apart. Okay, several days have passed. And it smells like a baby's behind. Ah. Anyway, um, we shall now take it apart. I wanted to show this part because it doesn't come apart, this part, because it doesn't come apart very easily. this does. But this is now held on by all those little uh, uh, rods. And so that will not come out too easily. So we have to help it. So I'm going to find the area right between the wood and the um, and the refractory. And you can see just a little crack starting to show there. And I'm going to keep working around. That won't help too much because that's just a piece of wood falling off. So. I'm just going to see if I can pry it. There we go.
pull straight out. Okay, there we go. Okay. Next thing to do is just start pulling these little puppies out. There we go. 198, 332 inch holes. Now we're gonna take this and put it in a oven at about 200 degrees. I want it under boiling point and because I don't wanna get a steam explosion. And I'm just gonna leave it in there for a few hours and uh, let it dry up. And uh, then I'll put it in the kiln. We'll see how it looks, okay?